Hi, everyone. How's everybody doing today? I hope everybody is well and um, enjoying their days. I cannot tell you how excited I am to have Hallie Crawford with us today to do this webinar um, talking about solving career burnout. Um, a lot of us have obviously experienced this, or maybe some of us are experiencing this right now in our workplaces where we just feel like there might be more we could do with our careers or just more in our environment and just how do we combat this feeling of um, burnout in our careers. So, so exciting, such a great topic. Let's just do a quick audio check if we could. Um, for those of you who are with us, would you mind raising your palm, clicking that little palm sign and letting me know that you can in fact hear us? That would be awesome. Okay, I'm seeing hands go up. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. Okay, so um, just with, um, I'm just going to tell you a little bit about myself and kind of what's going on here, and then we'll go ahead and let Hallie um, take over. So my name's Callie DeWald, and I am the director here of the uh, UGA Alumni Career Services function in the Career Center. So if this is your first time attending one of our webinars, please know that we offer free career counseling services through the Career Center. We also have um, about two webinars like this every month with different topics. Uh, and we also have a lot of virtual programming that we do, virtual LinkedIn and resume critiques and things of that nature. So if you're wanting to learn more about the services that we provide alumni, you can go ahead and check that out on our website at www.career.uga.edu. And you can just click the little alumni tab at the top and find out all those good things that we have going on. Um, just some information, we are going to have Job Search Strategies webinar that will be next week on uh, Tuesday, February 12th from 1 to 2, so you can check that one out as well. Uh, I also send updates um, via Handshake, so if you are on Handshake, or if you're not on Handshake is what I should probably say, go ahead and register for your alumni Handshake account. It's totally free, and you'll get updates from us about our events. Um, you'll get the Jobs for Dogs newsletter, which talks about all kinds of fun topics, including some specific, um, really neat highlighted career opportunities uh, that you can take a look at. I also want you all to know that today's webinar is being recorded. So if you miss something that Hallie mentions, or if you need to go back and hear parts of the presentation for an, um, a second time, you will be able to do that. And a link will be emailed out sometime this afternoon uh, with that recording. So just look Look for the, that email uh, uh, and, and go ahead and listen to it anytime you want. Uh, if you have questions during today's webinar, please, please don't hesitate to put them into the questions box. Um, I will try to check in throughout the presentation and reach out to Hallie and just make sure that we are keeping up with the questions that you all have. I am just so happy, like I said, to have Hallie with us again today. She is an amazing career coach. She's based out of Atlanta and um, our you know, she is a certified career coach. She's a national career expert in, like I said, right here in Atlanta. Her company, HallieCrawford.com, um, has a team of coaches. So it's not just her, but a team of folks. And they help thousands of people worldwide identify and transition into their dream careers. And so Hallie has also been regularly featured as a career expert in the media. So she has written for Forbes and the Wall Street Journal, CNN, the AJC and Fox Business News, so very well-known career coach. Um, for more information about her services, you can go ahead and visit www.halliecrawford.com. Um, but with all of that, I'm just going to let Hallie take it away, and thanks so much for being here, Hallie. Thank you, Callie. That was perfect. I greatly appreciate that, and thank you, everyone. For being here today on your lunch hour, we appreciate your time very, very much. Um, I have a little bit of allergies going on, but I think I'm coming across okay, so just appreciate your patience if my voice is a little scratchy this afternoon. So we are going to be talking about solving career burnout, as Callie said, and I am a certified career coach based here in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, and I actually have been coaching and training for just over 18 years, so it's been a long time that we've been in business. And one of the things that I wanted to start out with today is to let you know that I totally understand how it can feel to be burned out on your career path. Here's the deal. So although I've been doing this for such a long time and I absolutely love what I do and feel like 
I'm meant to do it. It's my passion and my purpose, et cetera, et cetera. There have been times during the course of my career as a coach that I too have felt burned out and just kind of like ugh, complacent, like I'm doing the same thing over and over. So it happens to the best of us, including me. Um, and there have been times, I would say about every three years or so, I can start to feel just kind of overworked or like things have become too routine. And I need to mix it up because I think that even if, by the way, we are in the right fit um, career-wise, we can still get kind of bored sometimes with doing the same thing over and over. And sometimes um, it can, we can feel overwhelmed. And as a result, we can start to feel burned out. So the advice I'm going to give you today, I just wanted you to know, is not just advice that we give to our clients, but it's also advice that I use myself, okay? So I want you kind of as the first kind of talking or thinking point here um, to start to think about what, how you feel, what brought you here today. Are you feeling kind of burned out and it's like, gosh, it's too routine for me, um, or I'm, I'm overworked or I'm bored? Which of these three kind of categories do you fall into? I want you to think about that. And as you can see on the slide here, it's kind of like our tank can feel on empty. So I want you to think about what scenario or area you fall into because that will help us deal with it, okay? And just by the way, too, there is a handout for today. Please feel free to download that. I believe it's in the handout section um, there. Feel free to download that um, and use it for taking notes today or print it out, whatever is best for you. But that will help you kind of follow along and make sure that you've got some good action steps. All right. So here's the deal for me. I have felt all of those things over the course of doing this for so long. And the challenge is that for me specifically, the, you know, the challenge for me is typically that things become a little too routine and I need to mix it up, okay? And so when I have had these issues in my own career, I brainstorm ways to make things challenging again, okay? Um, pay attention to these because these could give you some ideas about what you need to do about feeling burned out. So for me, I have made or recommitted to attending a conference at least once a year um, and a workshop for coaching, but also for other areas in my career. Um, to stay fresh and learn something new. I've also started delivering coaching in a different way, in person, through groups, webinars like this. I have coaches on my team as well. And I've also thought about and have started doing this also is presenting and um, leveraging or providing coaching to different audiences, corporations, and now EMBA and MBA students, and creating new topics to deliver to new or different audiences. Okay, and as I've grown my business to have other coaches on my team, I've also been working lately more on my management skills for managing my team. So think about ways that you can, as one of kind of like a starting point for you, that you can create additional challenges for yourself so that you can refresh things, whether it's conferences or maybe there are different ways that you can perform your job in a different you know, manner that will help you or grow or change your role over time. Maybe it means you, know, you stay at your current organization, but you can adjust what you're doing a little bit. So this starts to give you some ideas kind of right out of the box. But here's our agenda, what we're gonna be talking about today here on this next slide, okay? We're gonna talk about career burnout, the situations that can cause this and the impact it has on us as professionals. I'm gonna give you 10 tips to manage this career burnout. And finally, I want you all to make this real. I want you all to come up with and have at least two action steps that you will take in the next week at the end of this webinar today, okay? And one of the things I wanted to offer anyone to, that's attending the call today, but even those who are listening in afterwards, please feel free to contact me for a free career strategy session. I'd be happy to talk to you about anything that you need career related, whether it's this topic today or something else, okay? And just by the way too, if anyone would like a copy of the PowerPoint slides, so that in addition to the handout, they don't feel like they have to be frantically taking notes. Please know you can email us at admin at halliecrawford.com. Be happy to share those with you, not a problem. Okay, so on the next slide here, let's talk about why career burnout happens. So we don't wanna be this guy on the slide, right? That's the goal. So it can happen for a lot of different reasons. And this again goes back to when I was talking a moment ago about identifying why this is occurring for you will help you pick and choose which of the tips 
you need to start on first? Is it that you've been in a specific job, in a specific role, or even a certain organization, the same one, for an extended period of time, and you're just getting kind of bored, it's too road and routine? Are you called upon or asked to do something that you're really good at, but you don't like it anymore? I've had plenty of people come to us and say, Hallie, I'm great at Excel spreadsheets or planning events or whatever it is, but I am so tired of doing it. But they're pigeonholed in being the expert at that, so they keep getting asked to do it more and more. It could be that you have had some life or career changes. Um, it could be a dramatic event or something smaller, but whatever it is situationally, over time for us, what is rewarding to us um, can change. When I had my son, he's 11, and it, you know, before I had him, I valued my family and my family time, sure, but not as much as I do now after having my child. So our values can change over time based on life circumstances and situations, and sometimes that will make us feel kind of burned out, so to speak, at work. And finally, at the bottom here, for some of us, our workload can increase as we become more competent at what we're doing. As we become more of an expert, people give us more of that same kind of work, okay? So these are the reasons why this can happen. And again, I want you to write down and think about, please, what's happening to you? Which category do you fall into, or is it all of them, okay? The negative impacts, these are um, very straightforward, but the impacts that it has on us negatively is we can become bored even kind of lethargic and tired, you know, just like we're not motivated anymore and we'd rather go do something else, disinterested in our jobs and overwhelmed in some cases too. So if it is, you know, having more work and feeling burned out because of that, we can just feel overwhelmed and therefore not be as successful too. Um, and all of these things obviously cause us to be as professionals less effective, less efficient, and less successful overall. Okay, so we'd like to go ahead, and if you can, Callie, pull up the first poll here. This is where, after you've thought about it, okay, to let us know where you fall within, you know, what is causing this burnout for you. So if we can just take this quick survey here. Again, is it that, gosh, I've been doing this for a long time. I'm great at it, but sick of it. Some life or career you know, circumstance or situation has happened to me and, you know, my interest level has changed? Or is it just flat out, oh my gosh, I'm working so much and it's too much? And Callie, if you could share the results for me. I always, I can never see where they are. I think it's my yeah, eyes. Nope. After 40, it goes downhill. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to close this and go ahead and share it. And so, yeah, so we've got, you know, 44% of folks said that being in a specific job company or industry for too long. 19% um, right. answered, I do work I excel in, but I no longer enjoy it. 30% of folks are, I've had a life or career change and what's rewarding has shifted to so that value shift. And then 7% said that their workload has increased and that's, that's what it's attributed to. So gotcha. lots of yeah, lots of differences here. Okay, good. Thank you for sharing that, Callie, and everybody for participating. We really appreciate it. And one of the reasons why we do this is so that you understand that you're not alone, that there are other people that feel this way. And the good news is we can do something about it. Um, and when we get to the end, when we do the Q&A too, um, just as a reminder, um, Callie will read those out to me so I can respond. And if any of you, though, have questions that you would like to email me um, at the conclusion of the webinar, please feel free to email us at ha admin at halliecrawford.com. Um, that will get sent over to me, and I'm happy to answer questions as well. But Callie has to read them for me because at age 45, my eyes are going. Just kind of is what it is. All right. So here are our 10 tips. So these are what the, the um, tips or advice that we're going to cover today to help you deal with burnout. And you all do not have to, you know, complete all of these. I encourage you to keep the PowerPoint, keep these in mind, of course. But pick and choose like two that you want to start with based on your situation, okay? So let's move on and keep going through the slides here. Um, and we are going to go through each of these in greater depth. And again, if you have questions as you go, feel free to um, enter those into the chat box. So the first one is kind of what we've started with you already with the assessment is to take a step back and assess, okay, you know, 
where do I fall on the spectrum of feeling burned out? Has it been, you know, a long time that I felt burned out or is it more of a short period of time? So it's something that, you know, it's not like I have to leave my role or my organization necessarily. Maybe I just need to change up, you know, the types of projects that I need to work on or volunteer my time in a different part of the organization or whatever it is. So one of the pieces of assessments as you take a look at this slide here is to take a step back and try to get out of the emotions that you have about feeling burned out, whether it's frustration or anxiety or whatever it is, to be more objective about what's really going on. So think about the time frame, how long you have felt this way, and based on that, if it's a shorter time frame, for example, you may need to make less of a dramatic change than you actually thought you did in the first place. If it's been a long time, well, it might be time to move organizations or roles, but think about timeline. Also think about on this slide here, what do you want in your job ideally? So what are you missing? What is not happening for you in your current position that you want? And think about like get back to the passion or enjoyment. You know, think about why did you start in your field or in your role at the very beginning? What was appealing to you about it and how can you infuse more of that back into your current role? And as part of that assessment, what has changed since you started that has caused this burnout to happen, okay? It's even when you're doing this assessment, it's helpful to think about everything that you want in your life, what needs to change and be improved, not just in your work. Because when we work on and helping clients identify what their career values are, we actually start with their personal values first to give them a sense of, okay, what's important to them in their life in general, and how can they start living their lives more according to those values, but then even better, align their career with what they would call their career values as well. But, but we start with the personal first, so we get to that really deep meaning for them, okay? And then finally, when you think about and are doing this assessment, you wanna think about, are you being overworked in any specific area of your career? Like in some areas, it's not too bad, but with a specific task or project, it's worse. So you wanna think too about, are you doing too much of one task that at first you enjoyed, but now it's taking over your job more than you want it to because you're kind of sick of it. And maybe just shifting the course of your day and where you focus your time and energy is one of the things that could help, okay? So let's take a look at this next slide and we're still on the assessment step, the first tip. But I wanted to share this with you all. Um, some of you may have seen this before if you've been on some of our webinars. We use this career model with all of our clients for a lot of different reasons. This model shows you what your ideal career fit is. So it helps clients determine their career direction, determine whether they're in the right fit or not. Now though too, kind of as a checklist. And we also use it for work performance and job search to help people figure out, you know, what area of their career is not working so well, okay, and how they enhance their performance or whether they need to make a change, and also how to sell themselves in terms of a job search. So this career model can help guide you towards what may need to change in terms of your career. How and why or where are you feeling burned out? So just really quickly to show you here on the slide, we start with the fulfillment piece is one of the reasons why you're not into your job anymore because you're not feeling that sense of meaning or accomplishment. That's the first piece of the model here on the bottom right. Are you lacking that sense of enjoyment in terms of the tasks that you're performing? Like you're not able to have, you know, in the course of your day, kind of t touch on every different kind of task that you'd like to perform. Is that part of the problem? Going to the left here, are you not leveraging your strengths, the ones that you really want to leverage on a regular basis? This can enormously impact whether we have a sense of fulfillment in our jobs, okay? It's a really big deal. And then going up to education and experience, are there classes that you took in the past and you're not using, you know, that skill set or that education that you learned and that's part of what's frustrating you? Or the same thing for past experience, you're not leveraging what you want to. It could be in some cases, if you take a look here, there's personality type and then work environment. Part of why you may feel burned out and less motivated is because your the, the company or corporate culture, I should say, or um, organizational culture, that may no longer be a fit for you because your life circumstances have changed. 
or your personality type just doesn't fit your role any longer. Um, you want to think about both of those components as well. And finally, in some cases, people can feel kind of burned out because they're not getting compensated the way that they think they should or they don't have the benefits package that they really need or want for their situation, okay? So in terms of assessing what's going on and what's going wrong, everyone, this model is very useful. I suggest you print it out and actually use it as a kind of checklist for yourself to say, okay, what's working for me right now, you know, in terms of this model and my current job and what's not working? What needs to change? And then you can flip it on its head and also say, what do I really want ideally? And go through the model that way as well. So really helpful kind of way to get you to be objective about what's working and what's not versus being in the emotions of feeling frustrated and burned out, okay? The next thing that you wanna do, and this would be tip number two, is make a list based on the model and also the questions you know, that I recommended earlier what are the top five things that need to be different from that assessment, okay? Some of the examples could be reduce the, your use of one of your skills that you're just like, I don't wanna be doing that so often, I wanna bring up some of these other strengths. It could be that you need to adjust the work environment a little bit, maybe go to a different organization that has a different corporate culture or a different mission or vision, okay? So these are some examples of things that may need to change for you. The model will help you assess what those are. I would suggest making a list of just top five things at the very beginning though. Having more than that can be a little too overwhelming for people. Come up with the first five things that need to be changed and adjusted and start to think about, okay, what are the action steps that I can take to make these changes? One of the tips that I recommend kind of as part of this, everybody, just so you know, it's on the slide here, is to track your hours. Like one of the things I would suggest is get a sense of where you are spending the majority of your time or, you know, just have like for the next week, track your hours or even just for the rest of this week. That's fine too. Have a piece of paper on your desk and track, okay, basically about every hour where you're spending your time, on what project, what are you working on, et cetera, et cetera, to have a sense of what your day really looks like. Because sometimes we make assumptions about what's going on and having this tool and this tangible evidence of, of, okay, where am I spending the majority of my time? And if that works for you or not, that can help enormously. So don't just make the assumption, but track your hours for the rest of this week at a minimum so that you can kind of have a sense of what's going on, okay? Um, if you need help with any of these pieces, especially, by the way, with the assessment, a lot of times people can get so far with this using the model, but they need to ask a few questions about, okay, Hallie, I've come up with this and this, but how do I determine this piece of it? Please feel free to email us. I'm happy to do that free 20-minute career strategy session with you to help you get on track with what's going on in this assessment piece as well as anything else. All right. So finally, with the kind of the last advice here in terms of tip number two, the assessment, is think then about, okay, what actions can I take to do about what's going on? Can you change up um, your role in any way, shape, or form? Do you have any control over that at all? Do you have a good relationship with your boss where you could actually talk to them about it? And can you get your top five things at your current job, or do you need to switch roles or organizations or companies, okay? We always suggest to our clients, look in your own backyard and try to achieve what you want, if it's possible, at your current position first, because hello, obviously, that's a lot easier if it's possible for you to do so. Look and evaluate that. If it's not, it is obviously okay to make a move, and we want you to make a move, but we always suggest see if there's a way that you can evaluate it and get it at your current position, okay? Tip number three is to stay in the know. And I referenced this a little bit earlier when I was talking about things that I do to help you know, stay fresh. Think about whether for you part of what's going on is, gosh, I just kind of feel like a, this, I'm doing the same thing over and over. It's too rote and routine. I've been doing it the same way for too long. Are there new challenges that you need to develop for yourself? Is there new software that you need to learn that you already know about or maybe that you don't know about and you need to check it out and see what's out there to find out if there's something you need to you know, wrap your head around a little bit there? Is there a new skill that you need to learn that is <clears throat> a big deal in your industry or a new trend? 
This also, part of why this tip is really helpful is it helps you remain marketable if you need to leave your organization or your role. So this is good, you know, for two reasons, obviously. It keeps you fresh in the marketplace if you need to move on, if you find out, you know, that's what's going on. I would recommend that as part of your annual planning for your career, um, and we actually have a strategic career plan template. Um, happy to email that to you if anyone would like that. Feel free to just email us. But I would suggest that one of your pieces of your annual plan for your career, it's training and development. Even if your organization isn't, you know, as supportive as you would like them to be about that, I highly recommend and suggest you take it upon yourself to make that happen, okay? And even if you have to do it after hours, this is something that's critical for you feeling good about, you know, your career path, but also making sure that if it is time to make a move, you're not behind the eight ball, okay? So staying in the know is tip number three. Tip number four is to put yourself out there more. And what I mean by this, especially for those introverts out there, and I can say this because I am actually more introverted than extroverted. I am 60% introverted, 40% extroverted, so I can kind of pose as an extrovert, so to speak, when I need to. But sometimes I'm hesitant to put myself out there, to be more social at my organization. And not just, I don't mean like at social events necessarily, but just getting to know people and spending time getting to know my coworkers and um, with my team. Um, being seen at events inside and outside of your organization, sometimes we have to push ourselves to do this. So especially, this is relevant if, if your job is a more solitary one, okay? And even if you don't want a more extroverted role, putting yourself out there will help you get involved maybe in a new project that someone is thinking about but they haven't announced yet or match you up with a new team or something that's going on that if you hadn't put yourself out there, you wouldn't have known about it, okay? So you'll learn about new things going on in your organization and within your industry and be invited to do more, especially in those situations where, like I said, it hasn't been announced. So just put yourself out there a little bit more. Speak up a little bit more in meetings. Connect with people at your organization, not just about the things that you're doing now, but the things that they're working on and any new innovations or ideas that they might be thinking of um, that they would like you to help implement, okay, as a possibility. So tip number four is to put yourself out there more and just push yourself. Again, this does not have to be suddenly becoming an extrovert if you're more introverted, but just kind of thinking about like putting lines in the water, connecting with one person a week and setting that as a goal for yourself to kind of check in with them, get to know them a little bit better, see what's going on in their department. Tip number five is to volunteer your time. Now, I know this may sound crazy because all of us are very, very busy, me included, but whether it's internally or externally, um, this is one that's really good to help you mix it up a little bit, especially if you're getting bored. Raise your hand for a project that normally you wouldn't have otherwise because you're like, oh, I'm so busy. Raise your hand for it anyway and see like how it helps you get involved and kind of refresh and, and challenged again. Start something new that you realize your company or organization needs. Volunteer your time outside of work. Um, if that's relevant for you. How you feel personally, in, in your personal life, okay, impacts how you feel professionally. So we encourage you to work on both. We actually had a client in Atlanta who volunteered for a project online. It was a remote volunteering opportunity. And these, by the way, the list of um, websites on the slide here are websites where you can find volunteer opportunities, whether they're local, in-person, or even remote ones. But this particular client, she was located in Atlanta. The client that they, she was working with a remote team and there was a team leader. And the client they were working with or for um, was in California. And they were doing a Google Analytics product to help or project to help them with their website. It was fantastic for her. It was three months. She got references and recommendations from um, 
the client that they worked for from the organization that she could actually add to her resume. She put that project on her resume and she got a reference as well from the team leader and a testimonial. So this can help you beef up your resume as well, again, if you need to move on or if you're asking for that next promotion, okay? So volunteering your time within some way, shape or form or in some way, shape or form can really help you not just beef up those skills, but feel challenged again, get you involved and kind of motivated in some in a new direction, if you will, or in something new. All right, so tip number five is to volunteer. Let's look at tip number six, and this is to participate actively or participate more actively if you're already pretty involved um, actively within your team. These are small things that you can do to help you kind of get in the game again, even if it's for just a short time while you need to or while you assess what you need to do long term. If you need to just freshen it up for a little while while you determine, okay, do I need to make a more dramatic change, volunteer and participate more actively with your team. Participate more in meetings if you're feeling like unmotivated and you know just not as jazzed about it. Force yourself to dive in a little bit more. It's a little bit of the kind of fake it till you make it. And if you do that, you will be called upon to um, help with more projects and get more involved just in general. You'll be seen called upon to help with things that you may not have otherwise. And this will help you stay driven and motivated to perform as well because you're called upon to work on these things. So if you're one of those people that you've been hesitant to you know, participate actively in meetings and speak up and ask questions, force yourself to do that a little bit more in the next week and see how that increases your motivation, okay? Tip number seven is to communicate with your boss or supervisor regularly, not just in performance reviews, because then they will keep you in mind and top of mind for things that come across their desk that they may not have otherwise. So here's the deal. Most people, I think, assume that their supervisor or boss is always, you know, thinking of them and, you know, what they're what's going to be fulfilling and rewarding to them or if that they want to be promoted. OK, and this that's an ideal world. That would be fantastic. But a lot of times, everybody, that's not the case. So you want to make sure that you communicate with your boss on a consistent basis about the things that are listed on this slide. What do you need to stay fulfilled and effective? Ask them for those things. Talk to them about it, okay? Are you being overworked? Is there someone else that can, you know, that you can ask to help pitch in with some of the work that you're doing? And communicate with your supervisor about your long-term career goals and where you would like to go. Now, obviously, this assumes that you have a good, positive relationship with your supervisor and they would be open to these things. You wanna be careful about how you come across when you communicate about these things. And if, by the way, this is not appropriate to speak to your boss about, go to HR and talk to them about it if that's appropriate with their, you know, what your long-term career goals are, okay? We had a client at Georgia Pacific here in town um, that says their HR department, if you're proactive about it, because they don't always come to you, but if you're proactive about it, they will talk to you about your long-term career progression and find out and, and help you determine where you might be able to move around within the organization. Again, a lot of times we have to take this upon ourselves. Don't assume that they're gonna come to you and ask you, you know, what you wanna have next. Be proactive on your own about this, okay? So communicate with your boss or HR department regularly about what your strategic career plan is. Tip number seven. Let's look at tip number eight. So tip number eight can be to take a class, and we talked about this a little bit before, but um, that is, you can think about it in terms of online volunteering, like we said, that's one way to get more involved, but taking a class, whether it's online or in person, and Callie, if you can start to get the second poll pulled up, that would be great. The question is, how many have taken an online course? you could answer that for us, that would be fantastic. Here's the deal with taking a class, everyone. These are some classes online or places that we highly recommend. Coursera, lynda.com, the one on the bottom, that's the one that we currently like the best, okay? But these are all possible options where you can take a free online course. Even if it's just a one-time thing, this can help you get re-engaged in your profession and in your industry, see what's going on, learn something new. The other thing that's helpful about um, online or classes um, in person is that you can make networking connections. 
um, and people that you get to know that you can, you know, stay in touch with within your industry or outside of it to kind of stay on top of recent trends. So it's not just about learning something new, but you could also get a certification or a reference from a project lead like we talked before. There are lots of different reasons to do this. And once we get to the um, survey results, Kelly, just one second, is um, one of the online, or I'm sorry, in-person um, classes or organizations that we have heard really good things about from our clients is, it's called the General Assembly. And they have them now in many different, you know, large metropolitan areas. But feel free to write that down because that's one of the professional development places that we have found um, or organizations that has really good classes that you can take in person. So, Kelly, let us know the poll results, yeah, please. Absolutely. So it looks like about 70% um, or so folks have taken online classes and 32% um, have not. So, uh, yeah, it looks like a lot of people are taking advantage of some of those online learning opportunities. And we also have a quick question here, Hallie, if you don't mind me asking you. Sure. Um, which is kind of just going back to something that you talked about earlier, which was staying at your current job versus looking for another job. Is there a reason why you recommend folks stay at their current job before looking elsewhere? Oh, great question. Thanks for asking that. So the only reason why um, I recommend it, it's going to depend on the person's situation. So definitely, um, please contact me for, you know, to talk about this one-on-one -on -one if you'd like to. Um, but, because it is very situational, I guess I just want to say that, you know, as a disclaimer first. But the reason why we recommend looking where you are is because um, enough of our clients have found ways to adjust their current role, even if it's just for the short term, to feel a little bit happier while they're conducting a job search, that can just take some of the pressure off of you to find something right away. So if there are changes you can make now where you are, if that's possible for you, you may find in some cases that that actually works and it's enough for you to stay put for a little bit longer, either while you look for something else or kind of evaluate whether that helps. And part of why I say that too is because nine times out of 10, our clients don't have to make as dramatic a change in their career direction as they think they do when they come to us. Once they just kind of tone down the emotional element of it, they usually come to us and they're like, oh my gosh, I'm so frustrated. I have to go be a circus clown or, you know, something completely different. But when they look through the career model and they start to think about it a little bit more rationally, they realize that, okay, wait a minute. It's really just about the work environment here. I can stay in my current, you know, the role that I'm in, but I just need to be at a different organization. Or, oh, if I just move to a different kind of department within my current organization, that will help fix it. And that's part of why I say that too. Hopefully that answers. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense to me. Thank you so much. No problem. Okay, so tip number eight is to take a class. Let's look at tip number nine here. Embrace change, okay? so. Here's the deal with this one. To give you a new challenge in some cases, but also this can help add to your experience or skill set, you know, um, one of the things is not just embrace change, but be open to it or cause it in some way, shape, or form. We highly recommend like taking a look at where you are now and the processes and programs that you're working on or services or whatever it is, just depending on your job, suggest updates and improvements and efficiencies that need to happen within your organization. Identify an issue at work and instead of just saying, oh, this is so frustrating and it's part of why I want to leave, ask yourself, is this something that I can try to change and you know, improve in some way? So identify an issue at work and or a challenge or an inefficiency, something that you've noticed your competitors are doing better than you, or at you know one of your latest association meetings or webinars that you've attended, you realize there's a better way we can do this. Don't just be complacent about it. One of the ways that you can feel less burned out and a little bit more refreshed and maybe challenged is by trying to take on a new project, okay? And it's something that you wanna change. Now, if your organization is against it, when you try to do this, that's very telling. That may mean, may mean that you need to move on. But at least you can say, okay, I tried it here and I stepped out of my comfort zone and tried to do something different versus just moving on without trying anything, okay? And tip number 10, this is our last tip, um, and then we'll get to Q&A here in just a few moments. 
Tip number 10 is to have an action plan and create one. And Callie, if you can go ahead and pull up the third poll when you're ready, that would be great. So here's the deal, and I've kind of touched on this a little bit as we've gone along today, and the last question that was obviously about that, which was perfect. You want to create a plan based on your assessment of, okay, here's what I think is going on. Here are some of the tips that I want to take on based on what Hallie has suggested. Consider for yourself, okay, even if, it, if you do want to move on to a different organization, you need to say to yourself, okay, I need to stay at my current role for X number of months, whether it's like three or four months while I conduct a job search. That's my first step. I'm going to try to make the changes here. If you're willing to do that, if you're not, that's okay. But at least we know, and I always recommend, you stay at your current role before, you know, you leap into something else, okay, obviously. Set a three, six, or 12-month goal for yourself, all three of these actually, I shouldn't say, or all three of them, um, for what you want to do to make these changes and regularly update them, okay? And get feedback from friends, family member, whatever it is. Hire a coach to help you figure this out. Um, our last poll here for the day is how many people have a strategic career plan? If you can answer that, that'd be great. And it's okay if your answer is, I'm not sure what that is. This is what I was talking about a little bit earlier, that we have a strategic career plan template um, that can be very useful for this exact scenario of, okay, how do I fix this problem? And it will help you evaluate in three, six, and 12 months okay, where am I at making progress with this and what do I need to do next based on that? Callie, if you could share the poll results verbally, that'd be great. Sure. Um, so they're up now and it looks like about 21% of people said yes, they do have a strategic career plan. 58% uh, said no and 21 are still not really sure what that is. Um, so Okay, good. Thank you for sharing those, and thanks, everybody, for participating in that. We really appreciate it. Again, know that you're not alone. Not everybody has this. We usually have to work with our clients on this extensively because most of them don't have a strategic career plan. If you would like a template of this that you can actually use in Excel, we have one. Email us for a free copy of that. It's in or part of our webinar that we have done on the same topic. Three keys to unlock your strategic career plan. Happy to share that with you. Um, feel free to email us at admin at halliecrawford.com. Okay? We're going to start to move to the Q&A portion here. But before we do that, everyone, I want you to start to think about two action steps that you will take in the next week to make this happen. We do offer one-on-one -on -one coaching that is tailored to your needs. We have several coaches on our team, including me. Um, our clients have secured positions at organizations like this on the slide. And these are some of the testimonials we actually have from our clients. Our satisfaction rating with people is 98%. We're very proud of what we do, and all of us really love it, which is even better. Feel free to email me at admin at halliecrawford.com. I'd be happy to chat with you in just a quick complimentary you know, phone call to talk to you about our services and what they entail and how they can help you, okay? But let's go to the action steps, and please feel free to start entering your questions in the chat box as well. Here are some examples on this slide here of some action steps that you guys could take in the next week. Review the model like we talked about, talk to your boss, participate more actively, whatever works best for you based on your scenario, whatever is most appropriate. Please go ahead and write those down on the handout or on a piece of paper, whatever is best for you. As you're thinking about those things and formulating your questions, this is the quote that I live my life by. Whenever I am thinking about something that oh, I have to step out of my comfort zone and I'm not that into, and it's just like, okay, do I really want to do this? This is the quote that always gets me going and pushes me out of my comfort zone. The greatest risk in life is not taking one. This is kind of my mantra. I always think of this when I need to try something new or do something a little bit differently. I always want to say to myself, at the end of my life, did I try, even if I failed and fell flat on my face, or do I want to say that I didn't try at all? And you know the answer. We want to say that we tried, even if it didn't go as well as we would like. Okay, so keep this quote in mind. All right, Kelly, if we could get to the Q&A, that would be fantastic. Um, and I will answer, like we said, as much as we possibly can today. But please feel free to email me 
um, at admin at hallycrawford.com. If your question does not get answered, happy to answer that via email or talk with you in a phone call for a few minutes. Okay, so Kelly, what have we got? Yeah, so we have a question here. Um, just in terms of trying to change things that you don't like within an organization, if you are pretty new to that role, um, what advice do you would you provide someone that's new, kind of newer in a job, um, maybe isn't incredibly happy right now and would like to make a change? Um, what are some ways to go about that strategically? Great question. And absolutely, when you're newer, you want to tread lightly. You know, you want to tread lightly kind of regardless, but when you're newer, you want to make sure. So one of the things that I would do is I would objectively, you know, take an assessment take an assessment, if you will, or kind of take stock of, okay, <clears throat> what are the problems that you see or the, po or the issues? And choose one of them. You don't want to tackle five things at once, but choose one thing. And um, figure out, okay, what, what are the issues going on within that problem? What are the challenges? And write them down. Then I would consider talking with your boss or whomever it is, you know, appropriate to do so. I would ask questions about it. Don't just run in and say, I think this is bad. These are the things that need to be changed and all that. So kind of consider how long you've been there, that you're newer. And I would ask questions about it. So how long has this been in place? What are the pros and cons of doing things this way? And let them know you're asking because you want to learn more, but you might have some improvements, but you also want to know what they've done before because some of the things that you may be thinking about suggesting, they've tried before and ha it hasn't worked. So don't go in there like a bull in a china shop, but ask questions first so that you can ensure that you're not making assumptions about things being the way they are for some reason when it's actually a different reason. And you're also able to find out what they've done in the past about this and find out if other people feel this way too. That's how I would get started. Hopefully that answers. Yeah, that's a great answer. Um, I hope that answers too. And then we have another question for you. Um, so if you have your direct supervisor is unsupportive in helping you change um, portions of your role and they want to like you to continue doing the same work, I suppose, or kind of do it the same way. Um, what advice or recommendations do you have for that situation? Sure. That's a great question, too, because I'm sure a lot of people fall into this. I know that it sounds, you know, it sounds great, like, oh, I'll just change my role. Well, nine times out of ten, it's not that easy, and I totally understand that. So one thing I would consider is um, if there are certain things that you can do on your own, like with how you approach your tasks and your projects that don't have to do with the processes that they're, you know, requiring you to do, if there's a different kind of perspective you can take um, or a different way that you can do something within your own wheelhouse or within your own day, I would try that first. Um, if that's not the case for you and you do want to change some of the processes and procedures, I would definitely try to make a case to your supervisor of this is why I feel like this is, would be a better way for me to do this because of my personality type or because of my strengths. And if you've already done that and they're still, you know, not okay with it, I would definitely consider, like, I don't think at that point it's something you can just go, <clears throat> excuse me, this is where my cold is coming in or my allergies. I, you can't just go to HR and force them to change. This is where, if that's the case, if you've gone that far to really make the case for it, and, you know, it's something that you can't really go over their head and talk to their supervisor because that's kind of touchy as well, you may need to consider that this boss or this person is not the right fit for you. And you may need to be looking for another position either within the organization or at a different company where you have and can work with someone who's more open-minded, honestly, just being direct about it. Hopefully that helps give you some steps to start evaluate. Yeah, great. Thank you so much. Um, I also have one, and this is kind of funny because it's more on the flip side of things. So I have um, a manager here who is really wanting to ensure that his staff is fully engaged and feeling really fulfilled at work, um, how would you recommend he approach a burned out employee? Oh, absolutely. Great question and love that um, you're interested in that. That's fantastic. So I would, um, I think the model here is one way to, you know, help kind of start the conversation with them. But I would find out and ask them, start by asking questions for sure. Don't make assumptions. But ask them in a one-on-one -on -one meeting, instead of just talking about the tasks and projects, like, how are they feeling? 
what's going on? Are they feeling challenged by their work? And where do they feel and why do they feel kind of, you know, not that jazzed about it? So ask them and invite them to be honest with you. Let them know if it's appropriate that your conversation will be confidential and that you really do want to know what's going on with them. And you can ask specific questions like the things from the model. Are you not leveraging your strengths as much? So they may not know the exact answer. That's where you can bring the model in and say, are you, you know, are some of your strengths not being used? Where are you using your strengths? Where are you not? Is there any issue possibly with the, your management style or the culture of the organization or something like that? So I would invite them, letting them know that it's a safe space to share that information. Um, invite them to share with you what's going on with them, not just in terms of their feelings, but in terms of their day and the career model pieces that can help you um, have some talking points as a start. Hopefully that helps. Yeah, that's great. Um, okay, good. I, we do not have any other questions at this time. Uh, we'll give it a few um, a few seconds here in case anybody else has anything they'd like to ask Hallie today. Um, and Hallie, did you want to just let them know about your email? I know we talked about quite a few things that they, resources that they can get from you today. And just to reach out to you at the admin at HallieCrawford.com for um, yeah. any of the presentation and different resources that you highlighted today. Yeah, absolutely. Happy to talk with anyone. And I know, and just to reiterate this, I know that everyone's situation can be different and unique. And we try to give, obviously, you know, kind of broad strokes here, general advice that would go across anyone's situation. But I totally get that in some cases it's like, heck no, I'm not talking to my boss about any of this. So what do I do then? That's where I would be happy to speak with you one-on-one -on -one for a few minutes if you need tailored advice to your unique situation. Because when I can hear someone's situation, obviously I can adjust that advice based on what's going on. Sure. And this is, we got one more question, and it's such a good one that I can't not ask it. Um, I've had this recently with um, an alum that I've been working with too, Hallie. Uh, just getting to the point where quitting your job is so, it's on your mind almost every day, um, yes. and you don't have another job lined up, uh, but you're so burned out that you're really considering quitting. Is there a point where a person should quit without another job lined up? What are your thoughts on that? Great question. Our clients ask us this all the time. What we say is, if your current position is mentally or physically or emotionally so just draining for you that you can't even think about like conducting a job search or what the long-term thing would be. Like, I don't want to say abusive because that's a very strong word, but it's just so draining that it's getting in the way of you making forward movement in a job search or thinking about what you want long-term, then that's when I say it's okay to go ahead and quit and give yourself a break. So for example, you know, one of our clients, it was so emotionally draining for her. She was getting migraines all the time. It had that physical impact as well. That was a case where I said, you know what, it's okay to go ahead and quit. Just think through it carefully and think about whether it's getting in the way that much. Yeah. That's wonderful advice. And uh, yeah, because yeah, no how problem. is the person going to do their job search, right? If they can't, you know, be in a state of mind where they're, they're ready where for that. Where it's going to work. Yeah, yeah, or be effective. I mean, it's not just about having the time, but it's about being able to conduct that search effectively because you feel okay to do so. So again, it is a last resort, but if that's the case, and by the way, I did that. I quit a job because I just was so, I was crying in the bathroom, you know, too often. And it just, there was no way I could get out of my rut and move forward being at that position. So I quit and I did temp work for six months. So Again, it is a last resort, but if you have to do it, it's understandable and it's okay. And it's not your forever. Exactly. Yeah, it's just a temporary okay. thing. And if it makes you feel better and you'll be able to conduct your search more effectively, heck yeah. And just one, I have to just say one thing, Kelly, and then I then we do have to go. But um, I've I had a client once where we got on the phone with our session, and it was probably like our second or third session in. She sounded really good, and we were just talking, you know, for a minute, just checking in. I said, "You sound really good. What happened?" She goes, "I got fired last week," and she was just so thrilled. <laughs> and the point is, she had wanted that, you know, she had wanted to leave. It was hard for her to do so on her own, 
but it was such a burden lifted from her that it made a huge difference. Yes, that's awesome. Okay, there is a question about wanting to start a business in the future and how to transition into that. And I will say we have a webinar coming up um, in, a, in a couple months that's actually going to be about starting a business. Um, so please tune into that if that's something that you're interested in. But do you have any advice on that real quick, Hallie? I think go to the webinar because it's a lot. It's a big question that I would have to actually talk through with you a little bit. So if you are willing to set up a time to chat, that'd be best. Yeah, awesome. Okay, thank you so much for your time today, Hallie. It's been great. Thanks for um, all of the attendees. You had awesome questions, and thanks for participating. Um, we will talk to you all soon at the next webinar, hopefully. So see you there. Sounds good. Have a great day, everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye.